the story of the rampur village here we are going to study about the village economy here the name of the lesson rampur is the name of the village it may be changed from the originality of the village it is a village which is located in the uttar pradesh region and very close to punjab and the delhi headquarters this region now here we have the issue of farming how is the farming going on here in the village of rampur now this village of rampur is very close to the very big village called raiganj which is 3 kilometers from rampur and we have a town called jahangirabad which is 12 kilometers from the region of rampur so we have the connectivity here from the tangos the bulakat regions and all these things we have the autos moving from one place to another place we have all weathered roads connecting these all regions and all this is a major criteria for the place to get well connected and farming is one of the most important activity which is going to be done in the rampur region coming to the rampur region's farming activity we shall study in detail now what is the rampur's basic structure like how did rampur get into a well advanced thing farming the land and the other natural resources which are available in our rampur village is that our rampur village is an ideal village as it is mentioned earlier the name has been changed and we are having the, all the ideal features which are required for a village to develop very much see here we have three seasons for us like kharif rabi and zayad in all the three seasons we have the connectivity of water supply for this we have the connectivity of growing the crops in this season how did the people get this kind of connectivity here is it possible for any village in our country like india where indians are most of the time dependent on the rainfall can we get the supply of water for the three seasons is it possible for us and one more extra effect what we have here is no land is left idle here we have 264 acres of land in our rampur village and in all the rampur village lands we are cultivating it crops for three times a season like wheat rice and all the crops are cultivated how is it possible for a village to do like this is it really a fact or not let us study the analysis here now now when it comes to the supply of water initially in 1960s and 70s the government have implemented them by giving the tube wells they got the electricity for that earlier they used to have the wheels to rotate for them and they used to bring the water supply for the fields later when once the government brought the electricity and they understood by machines we can do the electricity the entire village got electrified and they got the bore wells initial government kept one or two bore wells for them to understand for them and to use the bore wells later everybody in the village started to have their own bore wells and planned perfectly and executed that one and they supplied water through pipelines to their fields and do not waste any droplet of water for them using the drip irrigation facilities and all these things so now they are able to cultivate it for curry for rabi and zayat seasons and they are able to do that agriculture is the best form of agriculture by using the all the technicalities like doing electricity and having the first fertilizer seeds and all these things doing with the machinery not with the bullock carts and all these things doing with the buffaloes they are using the tractors and all these things and the people those are not employed or not having lands they used to work in the big landlords farms and fields and they used to get a sustainable amount of income so to sustain these petrol diesel and all these things they are using the wind mills and all these things so rampur village is an ideal village where all the facilities which are required for agriculture are bestowed there and which is the efforts of the government and the people's understanding they have done it very well the land distribution in the village of rampur we have the total number of rampur family villages are like 450 families are staying in rampur and in that one third of the families are not having any land they don't own any land here that is like the number is 150 we have the example here they have 2660 acres of land owned by 450 people and 80% of the lands are owned by the the 300 families which are holding it the one third of the families are either working in their fields or not working in the the regular of their own lands at the same time we have an example of govind who is having 2.25 acres of land and who is having three children and he later divided that one into 0.75 for each one then now they are forced to work for the other people or look for the other alternative because the land got divided generally in india we have that average land holding is 1.7 hectares per one and it's going on reduction because of the families are getting uh, like children and children who get the division of the properties and all these things will force them to do that they have to cut down their incomes or properties and all these things now the situations are changing so we have to analyze the land distribution and in this land distribution the people those are not holding any lands of these 150 families are belonging to either sc category or the st category or the adivasi group or the lower income group where they can't accommodate to buy a land moving on to the most crucial part the organization of the production how to organize the production in any village or in general we have the five sub topics here see here the first of all what do we need we need the land to do something 
or a particular place to do something we can't do it on air or we can't do it in water so we need land for us next one is we need labor we need the people to work for us the people those are working are again categorized into the skilled people and the unskilled people the people those are working for us are called labor we are paid for them and they have to work for us in our fields to get our works done these are also called as casual labor people when you don't get them work done you can't make your land to get cultivated the third important factor what we have is the tools earlier we used to do the things with our hands and people used to do with the using of the all the raw form of things but now we have the modern equipped tools machinery tractors and the sawing threshing machines are there which are able to do the things and everything done in a proper planned systematic procedure only thing is you have to know how to operate that particular machine you have to be trained to use that particular machine automatically it leads to you to the perfection and large amount of work can be done at very short span of time for example like in america we have 100 acres of land each person owning it and they do if you want a labor to accommodate for 100 acres of land you need thousands of people to accommodate it but when it comes to machines they used to have two or three machines and which have the threshing sawing and all these things can be done they do it with using the help of the machines that technology we have, we have to know how to utilize it that comes under the category of the tools and all these things at the same time we need some raw materials like seeds fertilizers all these things to be get cultivated in our fields and all these things if the raw materials are not supplied for us we can't get the work done for us if all these four are there and at the same time if you don't have the knowledge of utilizing all these things and you don't have proper systematic procedure a proper person to take care of all these things then we can't do it anything you can build a beautiful hospital and if you don't have a doctor you have finance to build a hospital then you can't get the hospital to run properly this is called knowledge person or like they appointed doctor for a hospital because we have we should need a knowledgeable person to run all these things like managers in hotels and all these things come under the example of the knowledge or the enterprise who can take care of all these things to run properly these all these things together are called the organization of the production or the basic factors of production